Okay, so I will take a uh, um, a motion then to uh, rise and report from closed session. Uh, Trustee Lawton. Yes. And will you further move the adoption of the in committee report? I will. Okay, before we move to the approval of the agenda, the Peel District School Board is situated on the traditional territories of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the territories of Treaty 13A, 14, and 19. We acknowledge the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation on whose ancestral and treaty lands we teach, learn, and live and play. We are all treaty people. As a result, we have a responsibility to learn from the Indigenous people how to care for the land. We make this acknowledgement as one demonstration of our commitment to truth and reconciliation. We honour the Indigenous people who came before us and the continued in Indigenous presence on this traditional territory on which we work and learn. We are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land and by doing so, give our respect to its first inhabitants. I will move now to the approval of the agenda. Uh, Trustee Cameron, will you do that, please? Yes, sir, I will. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you. All in, all in favor, assuming I. Thank you. Uh, we have minutes for approval here. I'm, I'm going to um, ask that we look at them separately uh, after reminder that this is your chance to ask questions and you can't do it at the end. So, um, so first of all, Trustee Lawton, will you move the uh, PP and B uh, committee meeting of June 9th, 2020 for us before I go to questions on that? I will. Okay, thank you. Are there questions about the June 9th, 2020 meeting? Thank you, all in favor? Carried. Uh, moving to the Budget Development Committee uh, minutes of March 24th, 2022, much more recently. Trustee Green, will you move those? Sounds like a plan, sir. Thank you, are there questions? Seeing none, uh, uh, is it carried? All in favor? Thank you. Um, the stop our meeting, the student transportation of Peel Region meeting of January 14th, 2022. Are there any questions from trustees? Uh, I do have a question. Um, uh, at the bottom of, uh, well, it's item, it's item 4A at the bottom of that page, Ministry of Education routing simulation, which uh, runs a simulation for JKSK at 0.8 km and grades one to eight at 1.6 km, uh, which would generate a net increase of 7,000 eligible students. I guess my question is, really? Like, would we really contemplate this? I, I, I know it says not right away, but can we safely assume that this is never going to our way again. Um, to you, Chair Crocker, um, we had we do have Wendy Dobson, our general manager from Stopper, at the meeting, and I will uh, defer to her to tr to answer your question. Thank you, Controller Chung. Uh, thank you, Wendy, for your presence here. Thank you uh, through the chair. So the as everybody knows that has been around for a very long time, it has been some time since the Ministry of Education has redeveloped a student transportation funding formula. As part of the ongoing task, they developed a, a team uh, throughout the province from varying committees um, uh, to do a student transportation advisory uh, review of the funding formula. This process started approximately 18 months ago. And um, within that process, uh, some of the considerations were to do a standardized eligibility distance criteria throughout the province. In the ministry simulation that that consortia were directed to do, one of the considerations was for the distance criteria that you have mentioned, uh, 0.8, 1.6, and um, uh, sorry, I forget the other distance now in front of my head, um, 3.2 for secondary. 
Um, so nothing is set in stone at this point in time. Um, really what the Ministry of Education has done is they have asked consortia to do that ministry, or sorry, that um, simulation, that routing simulation. They have now taken that data back and they're doing some analysis. There has been no indication of how we're moving forward, when we're moving forward, if we're moving forward at this point in time. Um, we anticipate that we would hear some more information before the end of the school year on how we're going to progress with this. It could also be that the ministry may come back and say, okay, we tried that, let's try some different distance scenarios. Right now, they're just gathering data at this point. Thank you, Wendy. And I see the 3.2 figure is there. Does anybody else have a question on the uh, stop our report and it's Trustee Lawton. Uh, thank you, through you, Chair. Uh, and um, hi, Wendy. I, hi. It, is there, I'm not sure who understands uh, the government, but um, <laughs> is, is there any reason that we would have a province-wide um, distance? It, it, it doesn't seem to make any sense to me, but that may be why I'm not in government. So through the chair, it was one of the considerations that came out. The Ministry of Education has been talking about standardizing the eligibility criteria for over a decade. Um, so this was their opportunity to see what the results would come out of the data uh, in, in, in providing um, these scenarios to, to each consortium so that they could run some analysis on standardizing. Um, again, we, we don't know what's going to come of this yet. It could be that they may send something back, but there is a push to standardize uh, eligibility criteria across the province. Thank you, Wendy. Thank Trustee Lawton, is that, does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, yes, thank you. Are there further questions? Trustee Lawton, would you move receipt of this report? I will. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Carried. Okay, I think we're up to uh, delegations. And just, just a reminder um, to, to us all uh, that delegates are allowed 10 minutes. Um, if, if they sought permission, they could have up to three people making the, uh, the uh, delegation, but the time would then be split. So I, I'm not certain, uh, Athena, is it just you or do you have somebody with you who's also going to present? Yes, good evening. I'm here with Mr. Roman Wozniak, who is a resident on Pine Small Crescent, and he will be with me today. Will, will he be presenting as well? He will be speaking, yes, very briefly. Okay, so uh, welcome well, to you both. Yes, I, I will speak. Um, yes, we'll see. We're going to, we've, uh, one of us, yeah, I will be speaking primarily. Okay, that, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Um, so you have 10 minutes as measured by myself. as <laughs> And you can start whenever you're ready. Thank you. Thank you very much. And good evening to everyone, all uh, committee members and to all attendees at today's meeting and allowing us the opportunity to present and to speak with you. Um, as a, as a group. Um, we are, I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of the Alpo Hills and Heights Residents Association. My name is Athena Tajidu and I'm here today with Mr. Roman Wozniak, who is also a resident on Pine Smoke Resident, and he's also a member, one of the lead members of the association. Uh, next slide, please. The purpose of today's, uh, our delegation is to bring to your attention a commitment that was made by a former chair trustee, Jana McDougall, to the residents on Pine Small Crescent and to at uh, the meeting on May the 23rd, 2018, at the council meeting at the city of Mississauga. Now, before I continue with that, I would like to just give you a brief timeline what led to that meeting. At the end of um, March 2018, the uh, residents on Pine Smoke learned of the plans that the Peel Board had in, a, um, in going into a partnership and redeveloping, reconstructing rather, the Applewood Heights Secondary School community field. This was not communicated to the residents at all prior to. The first that any resident heard about it was through um, a flyer that went home to via students to a parent who's, was on, who was um, who knew the residents who backed onto Pine Smoke. And also it was done on the Holy Thursday, just before Easter weekend. So 
Um, it was, you know, many times high school students don't even bring that communication home to their parents. However, this parent did see the flyer, did communicate to the residents on Pine Spoke, uh, concerned about what is going on here, or why aren't we not informed? The fact being that we live right on Pine Spoke Crescent and neighboring exactly abutting to the uh, uh, the community field. At that point, uh, we regrouped, and the reason why we were uh, a, a group altogether was because in 2014, the Peel District School Board at that time wanted to put up a dome at that same at that same location at Applewood Heights Secondary School Field. Fortunately, that did not um, happen. Um, and then in 2018, we did keep uh, in, we in touch over the years. And when this came to our attention, again, we regrouped and we started looking into what is going on. Why are we not informed? Why did our counselor not inform us? Why didn't our um, trustee, our elected trustee, not inform us? us? Who is uh, Trustee Lawton, who is here today as one of the committee members? So we were very concerned and uh, we wanted to know more and we did not feel that this was the right um, what, what we wanted to see in happening right in the backyard of Pine Smoke and in our community without having more information. We learned uh, around the 10th of May, April it was, that there were going, that uh, four 80 foot tall stadium lights were going to be put up on this field. And you can imagine the impact something like this would have to a community that abuts next to the field. We continued our efforts on 25th of April. Councilor Fonseca did present a motion to council to address this issue. And then again on May the 23rd, another uh, walk on motion was presented by Councilor Fonseca. And at that time, um, I recall, we recall very well because uh, many of the residents on Pine Smoke was, were there, including myself, that um, former Chair Janet McDougall, along with uh, Director Jasper Gill, Trustee Lawton, Community Sports Partners David um, Gisborne, Randy Wright, who's also here today, were there, and several other people, I believe, from the board. And uh, the, the chair, Janet McDougall at the time, committed and said to the council members that the Peel District School Board is committed to being a good neighbor, and should there be any issues at all with the lights, that the Peel Board would work with the community, with the residents, to resolve those concerns and any issues that may arise, could possibly arise. And the city also took the position that because there were no lights there at the time on May the 23rd, well, there is no issue. So, you know, um, and with the commitment we believe that Janet McDonald made at the time, this was a promise to council members as well to the residents in the neighboring community that something would be done and that there would be a working partnership to be good neighbors as uh, Jana McDougall had stated at that meeting and uh, it was also direct associate director Jasper Gill who was with her at that time at the at the podium speaking to the um, to the commit to the council members. This is um, what happened on May the 23rd. And then after that, it was in July that the lights were initially installed. They were erected. And then as of September, the field was ready to open. Now from September 2018, after that, there were two mediation meetings which the city held. Now the position of the residents has always been, the neighboring residents right next to the field has always been, please turn the lights off at nine o'clock. At 9 p.m. is the time that we believe is best for us. OK, you still have a bit of uh, light usage up until 9 o'clock, but there are residents on Pine Smoke who directly back onto the field who have small children. One resident who is directly back onto who has a child that has MS and he has great difficulty putting his child to sleep. There are seniors and there are many people, well, several residents who it is very difficult for them at night because with that lights that are there, you also have the noise. The field is now open until 11 o'clock. Prior to these lights in this reconstructed field, the, uh, there was no activity after 8.30 p.m. And this is also another concern which uh, um, was encountered, which is countered and continues to be encountered. Now, can you please go on to the next slide? Here's a picture on pine smoke immediately abutting next to the field. As you can see, this is a person's backyard, and this photo is taken from Pine Smoke Crescent. 
which is right next to the, this is the homes the back onto the field. Please really take a look at what photo. What if your home was all of a sudden completely dark at night and then all of a sudden having this in your backyard? And this, please go to the next slide. And this is just one light only. There are four lights like this. Here is another residence. This person's home directly is center, smack center to the field. This is what this person sees in his backyard from two lights alone. And there's four of these, two and two more further south. Please take a look at this picture and imagine if you were in this position, this is your backyard. All of a sudden, one day a letter comes home from a child who goes to the school that your house backs onto, and you learn, oh my God, something's happening in our in the, the school field. Okay, this sounds interesting. What's happening? And then we learn things like this are happening after searching and calling and trying to get as much information as possible. And then from April to June, let's say, or to September, within six months, this is your new reality in your backyard with no communication to the people who you are neighboring to. And being given a commitment by the leader of the school board saying, okay, if there is any issue, yes, we will talk to you. We will come to an agreement. We will have a solution because we want to be good neighbors. Please go to the next slide. This is another photo taken from the backyard, and I believe it's from a bedroom window. That's why it's a bit, uh, you know, it's a bit sketchy a little bit there, but this is from a bedroom window, the second floor of a bedroom window. As you can see, the bit of the field shows there as well. Please go to the next slide. And this again is from a bedroom window. So that field prior to these lights was completely black. And now look at what is seen until 11 o'clock at night. And along with this kind of lighting that is there affecting the residents from the end, I believe the agreement that the Peel has with the community sports partners begins, well, this, first of all, it's after school hours th throughout the whole year and weekends and vacations and summers. And it's from up until from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. when there is school and from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. when there are no classes. So this is the reality from, let's say, March, which has already started this year, up until October, November, December. And if the weather is good, there are people coming on the field even after that. This is the reality. And on many occasions, the lights are on and there is no one on the field. The lights are just left on by David Gisborne. And we have addressed these things the residents have by calling the city, by communicating with David Gisborne, by contacting Trustee Lawton, by contacting Director, Associate Director Jasper Gill. We've communicated and we have a trace all of those emails to support what I'm saying right now. We've asked, we've tried the two mediation meetings in the fall of 2018, but unfortunately, um, nothing, there's no common ground. There were some options that were given to us, but however, they were not favorable. So we are still in the same position. With Stan Cameron, Trustee Cameron, we did go, we had an on-site meeting, and I believe with also Jess Baldgill as well, on-site. So you saw the lights and how they impact the, re the residents. Now, along with the lights, we have more people on the field now in the area. So up until 11 o'clock at night, we will hear swearing, shouting, whistling. We will, people will even urinate in the bushes of the people's backyards. We've had to call the police several times to address this. Soccer balls are kicked into people's backyards. People hit golf balls over here. These are also found in people's backyards. The nuisance that has been created by these lights has extended not only to the light nuisance, but also to noise nuisance and other, you know, indecent exposure, first of all. People here have children. There's elderly. What if they're playing in the backyard when all of a sudden someone does whatever they're doing by the bushes? Please go to the next slide. Again, another photo, again from a bedroom window from just one of the lights alone. Please go to the next slide. And then again, from the same resident who had earlier when there was a photo showing directly his backyard, he has a hedge, as you can see, that's up to that height. But this is what he sees from his backyard as he's sitting on the main floor. This is what he sees now every night when the lights are on. Please go to the next slide. This is the glare that exists with the lights. So we took this photo to show that 
people can literally sit here in the backyard and they can read without needing any more lights. This may sound ridiculous, but it is true. With the lights generated from those from the field onto the immediate abutting neighboring residence, this is how much glare there is. And at the top, at the second floor window, you can see the light there again, reflecting on the window. Please go to the next slide. Athena, I have you at 12 minutes. I'm prepared to let you uh, roll on, but please be aware of the time and uh, wrap okay. up as soon as you Thank can. Thank you. Thank it's you very much. Thank you. This is a shadow that reflects from the lights again. Please go to the next slide. Again, more of the shadow. Please go to the next slide. And now this is a video, which I would like for you to please listen to this video. Is it possible for the people who are uh, yes, please listen to this video. Go ahead. Very good. I would like to note in this particular video, this is not from the there. What happens is community sports partners separates this field into four mini fields. This particular activity took place on the furthest field from the residence, which is the, the first south field quarter field. This is just from one game being played or from the group of people for just on a quarter of the field. So imagine the impact if we have noise like this happening from four separate mini fields and that kind of noise continuing up until 11 o'clock at night which has happened please go to and this is like i said this is again from the second window of the second floor window go uh, directly facing to the field please go to the next slide Please also, we ask you to go back and look at this PowerPoint presentation. Look at each and every one of these pictures and imagine if this were you living in the back, having this in your backyard, how would you, how would you react and how would you, how would you feel? And especially when the people there are your neighbors, who in this case is the PDSB, the school board that you represent, committed to you and told you that yes, we are going to work with you. We want to have, we want to be good neighbors. And then you have mediation meetings. We talk about what we want to make it favorable for us. We explain to you the situation. We met again with you in April 23rd, 2019, and a gentleman was crying, the gentleman who has has a son with MS in front of you, telling you the difficulties he's experiencing with his child. Email communications back and forth, and then COVID happened. The field was supposed to be closed due to ministry mandates. This was not done. We had to keep on putting the pressure, asking questions, expectations, calling the city for anything to happen. This recent, um, these past few months around November, we said, okay, we have to move with this. Spring is going to come. COVID is slowly you know, going away. We have to deal with this reality. And the residents also felt that during COVID, they said, you know, we don't want to bother the Peel Board people. They are dealing with COVID reality, how to deal with the school situations. So let's just, you know, back off for a little bit. They were very respectful to this whole reality that the school board officials had to deal with with COVID. However, now it's spring. The field is now actively every night almost. There are um, the lights are on. Again, we have the urination issue. We have the noise issue. We have people who have been our members have been threatened. Those people who use that field have threatened one of our neighbors that they were going to kill him to the point that this man had to put in a police report. Because these people are considered the bad people who are the ones who are complaining. So this is the kind of conflict that's been created in our community. We are asking you, and this is the purpose of why we're here today. We wanted to show you these pictures and we're asking you. We did send a few on e email in December and in January 15th was sort of the day. Please confirm, are you willing to work with us? And director, Associate Director Gaspar Gill replied that, um, you know, we've made our position clear. This is as far as we can do. And that was it. Now, Bear, one more thing I forgot to mention. Athena, it, can I ask you to wrap up? You've been over 15 minutes. I'm wrapping minutes. up with this, sir. Thank, I'm wrapping up with this, yes. In June of 2019 Thanks or July, so much. the city met with, with the appeal board. We had requested that meeting. 
We were not invited to. We had requested a meeting that was held. We were not invited to it. And the city with the school board and David Gisborne made some kind of an agreement that the list would go off at 10 o'clock without putting us at all in that picture. We objected to that. Again, emails back and forth, but nothing happened. We are asking you again. We need to have a dialogue. We need to be assured that you will maintain the promise that um, the trustee Jerry McDougall made in, on May 23rd, 2018 to council members and to the residents on Pine Small Crescent. When, so for the, when can we begin this conversation? For real change, you've seen what the residents are dealing with. So when can this conversation begin to come to a more a favorable time for the community on Pine Smoke? Thank you for your time. And as I said, please watch this video again and please answer our question. Thank you, Athena. I found your presentation to be very clear. Um, trustees, however, may ask questions for clarification and now's the time. Is there a trustee who would ask a question for clarification from uh, from Athena and the Applewood Hills and Heights Residents Association? May I have a motion to receive then, Trustee Lawton, this is your word. I'll ask you if, uh, for a motion to receive. Thank you all in favor. Thank you. Now, Athena, we have received this report. Uh, it will be in the hands of staff uh, and uh, you may communicate further with them. If you have uh, trouble in, in that communication, you may you may contact me and uh, I will do my best to uh, to help with that follow up. OK, I'm sorry, but what happens now? Um, the purpose of this presentation was to receive some kind of an answer as to how we're going to be moving forward. So you've made your presentation and um, it will go to staff who will come up with an answer and we'll we'll transmit that to you. But they're not going to do it tonight. I'm sorry, sir. I but one of the per, one of the things that we're looking for today is Ch Chair McDougall committed. She promised. She said we will do you know, this is a promise made on behalf of the Peel Board and we relied on that and so did city councillors. We cannot be dismissed. Oh, we got our job done. Now let them complain. They're going to have to live with it and just put up with it. Is that how the Peel Board that has the values of honesty and trust and transparency? Please. No, Athena, Athena I'm not going to get into a dialogue with you here. I just want you to understand that the purpose of your delegation was to give uh, us something to pass on to the supervisor and to the director's office. So they will communicate with you. I, I was in contact with the supervisor today and he has made that commitment. So is that Mr. Bruce Rodriguez? It is indeed. OK, is it possible for him to see the recording of this video of this uh, of this presentation, please? Uh, Mark, uh, can you tell me, uh, do, do we have a permanent copy of this presentation? Yes, we do. There you, there you go. That's from our that's from our tech expert, Athena. Very good. Thank you. Is it possible for us to have a copy of it as well? Uh, Mark, you, you don't have a copy, Athena? Of what I just said? No, this was said because of the PowerPoint presentation I do, but what I just uh, oh, uh, what I just said, this was of my understanding and knowledge of this whole process. I'm very aware of so, everything I was with the so, residents. So yes, the, the meeting has been recorded and the transcription uh, is, is underway. Um, so my understanding is that that will be available to you. Can anybody tell me different? No, so Athena, you can go through the director's office for that as well. They will have it. Very good. And please ensure that uh, Mr. Rodriguez also has the recording as well for his review. I will promise you. to do my complete and utter best on your behalf. Thank you. We appreciate your time and thank you to everyone. And please imagine, just put yourself in the resident's position, live on Pine Smoke. If this were to happen to you, how would you feel? Thank you very much. Understood, Athena. Thank you very much. You're welcome to stay. This is a public meeting, uh, but there's there's no question period at the end, just so you know. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. OK. Um, so all in favor of, rec of receiving this report? I think I asked that, didn't I? Yes, it's received. 
Uh, staff reports, 9.1 is a stopper operational update uh, from Wendy Dobson, please. Good evening and, and thank you through the chair. It's been some time since Stop Bar has provided a, a update to this committee. Uh, the last two years have certainly been challenging for all areas of the school board, Stop Bar included. Through the pandemic, we have not had to cancel any school bus routes due to drivers testing positive, um, other than uh, lockdown periods that were issued by, by the, the Ministry of Education. With that being said, in January of 2022, when we returned back from a, a short-term lockdown, the Omicron variant had a serious impact on all of our routes and our driver attendance. So um, we started out and when we returned in January, we saw approximately about 40 routes being cancelled. That started slowly as weeks went on, started to decrease down to approximately 20 to 25 routes each week that were being cancelled. Again, these were simply due to drivers testing positive and the, there wasn't enough spares to cover off regular leave of absences, regular emergency situations, plus the Omicron variant as it hit. As of last week, we have seen a significant decline in the number of routes that are being cancelled right now, and we are currently averaging between five and six routes being cancelled um, per day. I wanted to carry on and talk a little bit about the fact that we had suspended courtesy transportation for some time for the 2020-2021 school year. Um, and then in the beginning of September of 2021, we continued to suspend courtesy transportation. However, in November of 2021, STOPR received um, approval from local public health to start resuming full capacity on all of our secondary school bus runs. Once we completed that process, which was completed around the end of January, we implemented courtesy transportation at the secondary level on all secondary runs at that point in time. However, at the elementary level, we were still confined to reduce capacity on the buses because cohort cohorting was still in place. However, on March 9th, the Ministry of Education supported a return to a more normal learning for experience for students. Within these guidelines was the lifting of cohorting and physical distancing for students in the school and on the school bus. Therefore, STOPR began the process of resuming full capacity on all elementary runs. We are still in the process of that. We communicated to all of our elementary schools that we were beginning the process of resuming full capacity. And then by the end of April, we would start to begin the courtesy transportation for all elementary students that we would that submitted a request. So the process will begin starting Monday, May 2nd to assign elementary courtesy transportation. At this point in time, that's a, that's the update that I've had provided for this committee on uh, what's been happening with Stopper. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Are there any questions? I, I don't see any. So please, on behalf of the committee, accept our thanks, Wendy. Um, from my perspective, at least, as somebody who uh, Controller Chung would tell you has made a lot of phone calls and uh, forwarded a lot of emails in the past. Uh, things have been so much better and uh, and I thank you for that. Now, thank you very much. Um, so may I have a motion to receive this, uh, Trustee Cameron? Yes, I will. Thank you. All in favor? It's duly received. Thank you. Uh, moving on to 9.2, which is the application status update. Um, Randy, would you like to introduce Nicole? Yes, I would, Mr. Chair. If I may, I wish to introduce Nicole Hansen, planner, who will present agenda item 9.2 application status report. Nicole? Thank you, Randy. Regarding the application status report, um, I just wanted to make mention that a minor correction has been made um, to the application status report in order to update the minutes. And um, I'd like to move on to discussing generally the um, development applications that we've been receiving from September um, 2021 up until today's date. There continues to be steady increase in development for growth areas throughout Peel. Um, so for Caledon and Brampton, um, we've been receiving development applications for um, the Mayfield West, 
Caledon East, Mount Pleasant, Countryside Village, uh, Bram West and Bram East areas. Um, for Mississauga, we continue to receive increase in development applications for the Ninth Line City Center, um, Midtown Growth Area, and along the waterfront for Lakeview and Port Credit. Um, so there is a lot of intensification happening, especially around, along major tr transit uh, station areas. Um, and some school sites have also been proposed within these growth areas as well. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Are there questions on the application status update? It's a huge document. Trustee Cameron. Thank you, and thank you, Nicole. Uh, through you, Chair, I do have a question. Um, it's on uh, page three, the the September 2021 data. The very first um, entry is a is a Caledon uh, area uh, application. On on the far right side, the anticipated students. There are two, I have two questions here. One is we have K to five, we do have a K to five school in this boundary and we have a six, seven, eight school in this boundary. Yet there, the, the way that is written is that there will be 222 students anticipated to come to the K to five school, 43 to a K to eight, but, but we don't have a K to eight in that boundary. We have a six, seven, eight. So are those, 43 students really the middle school number or are they part of the a total k to five number i'm just i'm, I'm just not sure why if, if you look down on the same page in three or four other um lists the, the six six to eight categories are uh separate and they're identified separately but it it, it is not the case in this in this application uh, can you help me with that? Sure, absolutely. I can definitely double check um, that item and then bring that back forward to you um, at a different time. Um, I do know sometimes within SPS, K to five and K to six are generated at the same time, um, but I will double check to make sure that that item should be labeled as um, seven to eight or six to eight, depending on the the type of school it is or middle school it is. Right, it's a six, seven, eight school. So I, you know, if you look at almost any of the other, just in the next couple below, even in October, 2021, uh, uh, for trustee Marchant in Mississauga, he's got a K to five, a six to eight and a nine to 12, a as does trustee Lawton above that. And so for some reason that category for um, the Caledon application is not broken down the same way. And I, I'm just a little confused as to where the numbers are, are sitting. Is it really six, seven, eight, uh, um, really getting 43? I just don't know why it would be called K to eight when there isn't a K to eight school there. So I'll leave that with you. The second question I have is in the same, on the same line. <coughs> that what's missing there would imply that we don't anticipate getting any nine to 12 students out of 2,204 apartments and 25 townhouses. And yet again, if we move down all of, uh, the, actually the whole list from top to bottom, almost every other, every other category has a nine to 12 uh, breakdown um, anticipated numbers. I, I, would there be a reason we wouldn't be listing the 9 to 12 number here? No, there's no specific reason and it's probably a minor correction that needs to be made and will be made. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Cameron. Uh, is that good? Are we good? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's good. OK, thank you, Nicole. And uh, I, I think I, I hear an invitation to follow up. Uh, on your own if you'd uh, if you'd like to and i see i see randy and nicole nodding so thank you thank you yeah. for that are there any other questions concerning the uh application status update trustee cameron would you move receipt i will do that yes thank you all in favor 
Yeah, that's carried. And Trustee Cameron, you put your hand down so that I don't get confused, please. <laughs> Thank you. I've done that myself. The tender activity report. Uh, Controller Chung. Thank you, Chair Crocker, and through you, uh, you have before you for receipt uh, our tender activity report from May 2021 to March 2022, and glad to take any questions. Are there questions? Seems not, Thomas. Uh, Trustee Lawton, would you move that, please? I will, Chair. Thank you very much. All in favor? That's carried. And Thomas, will you do the vandalism activity report as well? Yes, and through you, Chair Crocker, again. Uh, this is our vandalism report for the period from September 2021 to February 2022. As you can see from the report, uh, traditionally winter is our quiet period, and uh, it's before you for receipt. Thank you. Are there questions on vandalism? I don't see any, but Controller Chung, I have a question. Um, this would be just anecdotal in a general kind of way. Um, so two years of COVID, um, we've all seen changes in our community and you know group, group behavior and the way people are driving their cars and uh, you know the way, the way people are um, you know walking their dogs and everything else. Um, have you noted any any difference, any change, positive or negative, in the vandalism, or is it just impossible to tell? Our, the general trend during the period is that there's been a significant reduction in vandalism. So um, that's mainly due to reduced activity at the schools. Okay, thank you for thank you for that. I guess that's a silver lining. Um, uh, Trustee Cameron, would you move the vandalism activity report, please? Receipt thereof. I will move that. Yes. All in favor? Thank you, trustees. Um, I'm not aware. This is uh, agenda item number 10. We're close to the end. I'm not aware of any trustee motions for consideration introduced at a previous meeting. Uh, number 11 is trustee notices of motion for discussion at the next meeting. I'm not aware of any there either. Is there anybody with any late breaking news? No, I will finish with a thank you. It's been almost two years since we've met. Um, Associate Director Gill, I can't thank everybody by name on behalf of the uh, of the trustees, and, but I, I hope that you will pass uh, our thanks as trustees on to the people who are planning uh, new buildings and renovations of old buildings, uh, to the people who keep the water running and the lights on, um, to the people who uh, keep the driveways free of snow and the halls clean. Um, to the people who crunch the numbers now that we are also um, the finance uh, the finance committee, the people who do all of those things. Uh, please pass on our, our thanks. Things have run so well, from my perspective at least, during these two years, and uh, so much of it is uh, done behind the scenes and quietly. And we only notice when things go wrong, and I don't see a lot of that happening. So things are going right. Thank you for that. Please pass it along. So Chair Crocker, I will definitely pass that on. So thank you for that. Um, I will now take a motion for adjournment. Uh, Trustee Cameron, please. Yes, sir. It's not debatable. Uh, all in favor? Thank you. We are adjourned.